Well, hi, everybody. It's John Elzinga, and welcome back to It's a Great Day to Serve the Lord. And let me ask you a question. Has someone ever told you, you'll never change? Uh, or, or maybe you, you're pretty sure that that's what they think about you, that, that that's what they suspect about you, that, that you'll never change. Nothing more, nothing different. You are who you are. That's it. And have you, especially if you're a leader, have you ever thought that about somebody on their, your team? They'll never change. They'll never get any further than they are. You thought, well, they'll never be a leader, or they'll never go beyond where they are, or, or they just don't have it in them. Or even worse, they're hopeless. They're a lost cause. If somebody's ever told you that, or if you've ever thought that about somebody, consider Peter. Peter, the disciple Peter. <laughs> this guy originally named Simon, right? He is this impulsive erratic, reactionary kind of person. I, I mean, he, he just, just bubbles over. Whatever he thinks, he says. Whatever he wants to do, he does. He just jumps at stuff. I mean, this is the guy who saw Jesus walking on water toward them, jumps out of the ship, walks on water for a little bit until he looks down, and he falls in. This is a guy who, who uh, when the soldiers are coming to get Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he chops off the soldier's ear. This is the guy who denies Jesus three times. Don't, aren't you the guy that was with Jesus? At, no, no, no. He denies Jesus three times, even though he had told Jesus, I'm going to stick with you. And yet, there is this moment. There is this moment between Jesus and Peter. And, and Jesus says in, in Matthew uh, 17 to 18, uh, 16 verses 17 to 18, uh, Jesus says to Peter, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I'll build my church, and the, ga the gates of hell or Hades will not overcome you. I tell you, you are Peter, the rock. <laughs> this instable guy. I mean, the symbol of a rock is strong and stable and sure and there. And yet, this impulsive, erratic, uh, reactionary guy, Jesus says, that's who you now are. It's an amazing thing. Dear leader, what changed? What changed? Peter so dramatically and more importantly what can change you or, or, or what can change those on your team or anybody that you're connected with at any time in any way well what changed P Peter for sure was the pronouncement of Jesus you are the rock now but let, let, let's put that in our terms what can we do to change other people to cause that change, to be the open for their change. Uh, we can speak belief into somebody's life, number one. We can speak positive belief into someone's life. Proverbs 20, verse 5 says, the, purpose, the purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but a person of understanding draws them out. When you speak belief into somebody's life, it can't be fake. It's got to be real. It's got to be about something that you see in them that you can draw out of them. Maybe they didn't even see it themselves. It's giving somebody an opportunity. Uh, Deuteronomy 1, 38, and and God's talking to Moses, and, and he says, But your assistant Joshua, son of Nun, will enter it, that is to say the promised land. Encourage him, because he will lead Israel to inherit him. Deuteronomy 3, 28. But commission Joshua, and encourage and strengthen him, for he will lead this people across, and will cause them to inherit the land that you will see. Oh, there, there are the people out there that are the mockers and the blockers. The mockers and the blockers. The mockers, you know, they're the ones that pigeonhole people. They, they think or say things about them that are demeaning. 
they, they put them down. They feel that they're stuck and they'll never get any. They'll never get anywhere. They're they're never going to change. And that attitude that they have about somebody or that you have about somebody, it can be infectious and it can bleed over to other people. That negative attitude, Psalm 109, verse 3, the psalmist says, with words of hatred, they surrounded me. They attack me without cause. They, they really have no cause for this. And then there's the blockers of the world, isn't there? There are the blockers, the people of influence, people of power who hold people back from getting ahead. Trust me, I've had plenty of blockers in my life. Why do they do that? Why do they do that? Why do they hold back people back? Well, it could, I don't know. It could be a number of things. It could be their own security. Maybe resentment towards somebody. that Maybe it's just somebody they don't like. The Pharisees were like this. They were blockers. Matthew 23, 13 says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the door of the kingdom in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to, who are trying to. If you can't get there, you won't let them get there either. Psalm 38, verse 20, the psalmist says, Those who repay my good with evil lodge accusations against me, though I seek only to do what is good. Insecurity in blockers responds to the goodness of others, and they don't want them to be better than them. They don't want them to get any farther than they. They don't want them to take a supreme place that they might have. They don't want to lose their voice that might, they might have. This happens in the corporate world all the time. Hey, dear friends, in our life, in your life, you may encounter opposition. People who are mockers and blockers. People who, for a variety, variety of reasons, don't want us to get ahead and, in fact, get in our way. And as Christians, we encounter this in our culture as well. Whatever your challenge, remember this, all that matters is what God thinks of you and how God can use you despite those that don't want us to get ahead, that don't want you to get ahead. Psalm 129 verse 2 says, They have greatly oppressed me from my youth, but they have not gained victory over me. No. Deuteronomy 31 8 says, The Lord himself goes before you. This should give you hope, folks. Those that say you'll never change, if you think you'll never change, the Lord himself goes before you, and he will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. And then finally, a verse that should follow us all the days of our lives as we go in and out of different stages of our career and of our life and positional changes and uh, corporate changes and company changes and, uh, uh, you know, uh, superiors uh, change. Remember this, Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say in response to all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, who can be against you? Well, that's the devotion for today, and thank you to all who have supported this channel, and if you would like to support it, there's a link below. Well, God bless you, and remember, it's a great day to serve the Lord.